everyone. Uh, I'm Vu from Cloudflare. Uh, I know you guys have been out here for a while now, so I'll try to keep this uh, as short as possible, but as uh, direct as possible. So thanks for all coming out tonight. Uh, so I'm going to be talking to you guys today about uh, lowering network latency um, and how that can result in basically faster loading times for web pages. Uh, so maybe not that JavaScript-y, but at least if you take a step back from JavaScript, you just think about websites, talking about how we can improve the overall performance of websites, basically. All right, so I'm going to ask you guys something simple. But very simple. You guys have probably seen this before. Um, let, me, let me know if you've seen this. Uh, who can tell me what it is? Yeah, it's a, it's a fiber cable. Yeah, so in Singapore, um, Singtel, Starhub, M1, uh, they will provide this if you've got fiber at home. Uh, and that's pretty much a core part of how s some folks in uh, Singapore connect to the internet. Of course, beyond like cable internet and, and other mediums as well. So another question. Uh, who knows what the speed of light is? Let's see. <laughs> <Let's> see. <laughs> All right, so I put this from Wikipedia anyway. So the speed of light is, uh, you know, almost uh, 300,000 uh, kilometers per second, basically. So something that uh, fundamentally hasn't changed with the internet is that uh, the speed of light has always been the same. Uh, it hasn't changed yet unless someone's discovered something different and faster, but right now that's, uh, that's constant. <laughs> All right, so it, we, if we look at bandwidth and latency, uh, we can see that uh, a correlation between how um, bandwidth increases, basically, uh, with latency, basically, and how um, page load times uh, will decrease when the round trip time decreases. So what does that mean? Uh, so I'll just put a brief definition of what uh, RTT is, just in case. Uh, you guys aren't too familiar, so RTT just basically means round trip time. Uh, and it's basically the duration for a network request to go from a starting point to a destination and then back, basically. So essentially a round trip. Uh, so just keep that in mind, because uh, it's important to note for the, the latest slides. So if we think about um, 10 milliseconds, how far, is, how far does that take you? Uh, so you can see in this chart, it takes you to Singapore, Malaysia, Maybe a bit of Indonesia there, uh, and, and a bit of, a little bit of Thailand almost, almost, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and 20 milliseconds, gets you a little bit further now. So you, you get to cover a little bit more of Indonesia this time around. Uh, you got Vietnam now, and you got actually Thailand in this picture. And then we, if we look at this at uh, a greater, um, Time, so 15 milliseconds, you can see it covers a lot more. So it covers Australia, even some Pacific islands like Papua New Guinea. It's got China, India. So you notice here, the round trip time basically is increasing, obviously, just because distance is increasing. So even though the speed of flight is it's constant, you'll notice that the round trip will, has to increase with that. That's the, essentially the point of these slides. Uh, so essentially, you ideally want to be closer to your eyeballs. Uh, that's essentially the goal, as much as possible. And I know Sebastian's talked about a few things that sort of lead to, to some similarities around here. Uh, so ideally, you want to have some sort of distributed network or some sort of way to be able to interact with users so it's closer. So that distance that has to travel, it's not that great anymore, so that you can increase the speed. So ideally, you want to have more servers rather than just one. So just picture you know, one server trying to serve traffic all around the world. It's obviously better to have more than one, right? Uh, so these slides just sort of dick pick that. So you, it just zoomed in a little bit more. So you've got one server. You've got multiple so, um, computers so, um, requesting a file from it. And then this one, quite similar as well. You just got multiple servers. And the same thing in terms of multiple computers requesting something from it. So I did a, um, a ping test uh, on a website just to show you sort of how this is on the open internet. 
Uh, so you can see here, like, there's different load times for different parts of the world, right? Uh, so based on this, wh where do you guys think my uh, origin server is located? So the original server, that one server, where do you think it would be located? Yeah, it's somewhere in the US, yes. Yeah, it's hosted by, um, on, on blogger.com, so it's owned by Google. Uh, and then they just happen to have my, my blog on, uh, hosted in uh, the US, basically. So somewhere, yeah, close to New York, I think, yeah. All right, so now I, I did a similar test again. Uh, this time using a, a, a CDN, which is like a content delivery network. Uh, and you can see here the, the round trip time is much lower, so you've got five milliseconds here. So on the earlier slide, you can see like the times uh, can be a lot more depending on where you're sort of trying to ping it from, essentially. And then um, just for fun as well, because uh, you guys might have heard of 1.1.1, uh, I did uh, a test to 1.1.1 as well uh, to show you the sort of same sort of experience, not just my website, but just in general in terms of my computer just pinging, trying to ping it like a data center that's close in a sense. All right, so how fast do, uh, do you think you can process incoming data? Okay. All right, so you got three bars here. So you notice the, the one at the very bottom is going the fastest, and then the one at the very top is going a little bit slower. Uh, so you notice how your, your brain is trying to capture that data that's coming through there. So I don't know about you, but um, for me, the, the, the one at the very bottom lags a little, <laughs> in a sense. All right, so yeah, so basically there's, there's various input delays. Um, so the first one's like 20 milliseconds, uh, the middle one's about 40 milliseconds, uh, and, and the, the final one at the bottom is about 80 milliseconds. So there's been some studies around this. Uh, which I can give you some links to if you're interested in understanding this a little bit further, but um, basically that's the general input delays that a, the general human would have. So the, the studies have pointed out that I guess the fastest rate that humans, us humans, can really process these visual stimuli or um, data points to about 13 milliseconds. Yeah, before you really yeah, find yourself losing yourself into the, the lag. <laughs> All right, so if you think yourself uh, when you're gaming, right? Uh, so, so this one just happens to be an extreme example in the, in the big hall. Uh, then these are sort of the rates that you normally would see, something along these lines. So you notice that the, the very bottom is, you wouldn't notice a difference really when you're gaming. Um, 50 milliseconds, it's, it's okay, of course, right? Uh, but when it goes beyond 100 milliseconds, it becomes detrimental to your, uh, your playing experience, basically. So someone will probably shoot you dead in the game before you even realize. Or that, that alien will kill you <laughs> uh, when you, you react too slowly. All right, so let's get back to uh, websites and web pages in this case. Uh, so again, a little bit technical here, but um, basically for a browser to download a web page, it needs to do a few different things. So there's a few different phases associated with it. So the first phase is uh, DNS lookup. So DNS means domain name uh, server lookup. So it looks up the IP address when you type in, say, google.com or cloudflare.com. Then it has to do a TCP handshake. Then it has to do a TLS handshake. And then the final step, it actually will do a HTTP request, which actually will send you a request. Uh, so you notice each of these steps will come with a certain number of round trips. Uh, so it, it, it essentially will introduce latency, basically. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, so you'll see here on the far left, TLS 1.2. So you see it has seven steps there, whereas the, the latest standard, TLS 1.3, has one less handshake. So that does a, a lot to performance, basically, like uh, with a lot of different packets that's routed. One less handshake means a lot. And I'll show you in, in a bit exactly how much it can mean. Uh, so in terms of that round trip time again, so when it comes to new connections, 
generally, with each of these standards, so there's like the most modern at the bottom to the older standards, there's four round trips for the first one. Uh, the middle one, 1.3, has three round trips. And then the, the one at the bottom, so TLS 1.3 plus zero round trip time is, is probably the fastest. So there's actually a difference between creating a new connection and resuming connections as well. So you'll notice that the resuming connection improves as each standard evolutes. Uh, and this shows just spells it out in a little bit, uh, in a different way, basically. So those same sort of steps. So basically, a client will say hello, server will respond, uh, it will do a key share, so that um, a TLS SSL, uh, and then it will f finish, uh, and then it will finally send the request. Uh, and then this step with TLS 1.3, you have one less step in that process. Yeah, and then I've got this video, which I'll show you. So if you see there, basically what I just showed you is with TLS 1.3 plus the zero round trip um, time, or RTT, you notice here that it's decreased the, the amount of latency by close to like maybe around 170 milliseconds, basically just by taking away that step again uh, when it comes to resuming the connection. So there's different things that have happened over the years in terms of the evolution of TLS and SSL. So we're sort of over here right now. This graph hasn't been updated with the TLS plus zero T RTT yet, but that essentially will find itself over here. Okay, and now I'm gonna take a step into the internet. So the internet, as you all know uh, already, is a, a series of interconnected networks. That's basically at the core of it. It's a bunch of networks connected to other networks. Uh, and and um, if you think in the local sense, in Singapore, it's like an MRT in a sense. Uh, even worse if you go to other cities like London and you know, it's maybe in the US, where all these connections are like insanely connected. <laughs> and, you, and you wonder where the logic is in it. All right, so this is quite similar to what uh, Sebastian was saying in terms of the, the internet, in terms of having some of the submarine cables sort of all around the world. Uh, you can actually, there's actually some public websites out there where you can actually look up some of the submarine cables a little bit more detail. So I just put the link at the bottom so you can just check it out just for fun and see where the various connections are. You know, if one of those links gets disconnected, then of course all the routes have to go a different way. Uh, and that causes congestion, as you guys may have experienced. Okay, and then uh, there's also an, a pretty useful website on, on the internet as well called Data Center Map. It's really good. Um, so you can actually, when you go to the website, you can actually search for each of these locations and, and look at it in a lot more detail too. In terms of just data centers in each country and territory. So fundamentally, the internet runs on BGP. So I know Sebastian talked about BGP as well. Uh, so BGP basically means uh, Border Gateway Protocol. Uh, so what it, what, it, what it does, or what it means, is it's, it's a protocol that guides routing decisions f uh, across the internet. So ISPs would essentially follow this standard when it comes to routing all those packets that you need to be, be able to actually see a website or uh, download something on the internet. So it's, it's based on a uh, system of trust, basically. So the AAS, or the, the IS providers, uh, they basically run their networks in their own way. Uh, so it's, there's, the internet is, I guess you can say, quite vulnerable to how they run, but also uh, they, they find advantage in terms of running with these ISPs as well, because someone is essentially putting this network together. Uh, so these ISPs have different priorities. Um, m most of the time, they look at uh, ensuring you have, there's enough high availability, there's lower latency, 
less packet drops, there's minimization of traffic costs, uh, and maximizing revenue, basically. Yeah, because at the end of the day, these ISPs are businesses, right? So it, it can mean a lot of different things for us as users on, our, on the internet. So the, the router decisions that are made on the internet are basically dictated by what the ISP sets uh, in, the, in, this, uh, in, in their systems, basically. So sometimes they may take you on a detour. Sometimes they will deliberately avoid a tollway just to save on costs because they have to pay for another transit provider out there to be able to access a particular route. So often, often uh, what we see is it, it results obviously in, in decreased user performance. Uh, the paths are congested. Uh, they can be unreliable. Uh, and they just will choose that route just because it, it may be the cheapest or maybe the most convenient for them. All right, so is there anything you can do about it is the question. So you can, uh, there's, there's some things that you can do. Uh, so there's a technology out there called Argo Smart Routing. So it works a little bit like Waze uh, in that relies a lot more on um, the P1 networks of a particular network provider. In our case at Cloudflare, we have our own preferred network as an example, uh, where it, it basically goes for the best route not necessarily the cheapest route, but the best route is ideally the, the way that Argo does work. And it also means that like, you know, this connection can be reused, uh, congestion can be avoided, and in general, in general as, as a general outcome, there's faster loading times for the, the end user, basically. And that's sort of the goal as, as a website owner or um, provider. You, you want to ideally have that website load as fast as possible. Uh, so this picture just depicts that in... Uh, an infographic, so you can see here again, uh, one's more congested, one's not, uh, and one just relies more on the, the preferred network, um, whereas the other one may re uh, go onto a route that is just the most convenient and cheapest, to put it quite bluntly. Uh, so yeah, so we, we've done some studies. So I'm actually on the post sales team at Cloudflare. Uh, so we've done some studies with some current customers. Uh, in terms of the improvements with and without Argo. Uh, so there's, we've seen some significant increases for customers who have to go a lot of hops in a sense, cover a lot of distance. So have a lot of international traffic or traffic that needs to travel quite a distance because there's more possibilities of those routes being sent to m more of those unpreferred routes. Uh, and it goes more to the, yeah, just essentially the cheapest routes rather than the ones that would send your traffic faster. Uh, so I actually put some stats from some of my customers. Um, I'll, I'll show you some public ones first. Um, so we've got the sketches.com. So when they activated Argo, um, they received 200 milliseconds improvement in performance. Uh, and there's a company in, in the UK that did the same, and then they saw their, their website performance increase from 1.54 seconds to 600 milliseconds. And then there was a, a, a company in Australia that saw a 50% increase just by using Argo. But additionally as well, they actually used our, C, uh, our DNS as well. Uh, so that's more of an offshore component in terms of using our DNS. Um, but that also allowed the, the process to be faster too. So if you remember those four steps earlier that I was saying, the four phases, one of the phases is DNS, and the other one is the, all these other steps which gets accelerated with Argo. Uh, yeah, so I analyzed a customer in Australia uh, who I saw used Argo as well. Uh, so they saw a 45% increase in uh, performance. Uh, in India as well, uh, we saw a customer have a 31% increase in performance. So you notice here in terms of the pattern, uh, it varies customer to customer. Uh, and it's really based on the actual customer's traffic in a sense. So depending on your traffic in a sense, uh, the performance gains may vary. Uh, so I had another customer, about 45% faster. Uh, one in Thailand, which I found quite interesting, had a 59% increase in traffic. So, so for some customers, yep, sorry. Yeah, they're already using the CDN, that's right. So they're using the CDN plus Argo as well. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they just at, at, at the fundamental base level, they're using uh, a CDN already, and they're just using Argo on top in terms of these statistics and how, in terms of how to read it. Yep. So uh, the key takeaway, I guess, from this presentation, because I know there's a lot to digest uh, towards the end of the day, uh, is really um, you can consider using a, a, a content delivery network rather than just having a, a lone server sort of send traffic or, or serve traffic for your customers. And then the, the other takeaway would be that the internet doesn't always follow the, the shortest routing path. Uh, and there may be a variety of different factors uh, causing that. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, you, you can definitely consider uh, a content delivery network. <laughs> All right, and then this is just uh, something that I, 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 I kind of love at, at Cloudflare, uh, and that's the 1.1.1 the um, service that we offer now. Uh, so you can actually change your DNS at home on your laptop so that you can use our DNS to, um, to run your queries, basically. So when you search google.com, it goes straight to our DNS, and then we would give you the IP address, essentially. So that happens quite instantaneously in the back end. Uh, it's, I find it quite fast personally, but you know, it's up to your, you and your personal experience in terms of if you want to try it and use it and see if it actually benefits you. So Google has something similar called the 8.8.8, .8, basically. Yeah, and I just put a bunch of links at the end, and that's pretty much it. I, I really appreciate your attention, and uh, hopefully that was informative in terms of just giving you guys a quick rundown of how uh, you can, you know, improve the website speed uh, um, on the internet. I guess fashion over to you. Uh, questions? Yeah, do you want to? Uh, oh, yeah, do you guys have any more questions? So when does Cloudflare going to support Quick? The quick protocol. Sorry, tr trick question. <laughs> Any more questions? Man, we crushed our brains tonight. Yeah, sir. Okay, in that case, then round of applause, please, for uh, Vu. Okay. Thank you all.